Hey guys, this is Baymax man. <clears throat> um, I just got another um, 900 SLH of 900 uh, Sony Baymax, and we're gonna see what happens. Um, now I took the screws out of the cover, but I had not plugged it in yet because I just got it. Um, I just got it out of the box, so. We're going to take a look at it. And the only thing that the seller was saying was that the tape carriage was stuck. So let's plug it in and see what happens. But before I plug it in, I want to take, the, take this top completely off. Because we can't look uh, work on it when it's got the top on, so let's give you guys a closer view here. So there's a tape stuck inside of it, and it looks like the tape is threaded up. So I might get lucky. Uh, what could be is maybe just the cassette housing has failed. And uh, maybe the VCR itself works. I'm not sure. Um, here's one thing I noticed that there's too much, maybe a little too much tension on this belt. But let me, um, let me uh, put the camera back down. Get you guys a good view. And let's just plug it in now and we'll see what happens okay all right let's get that that plug has been messed up okay we got a very dim display okay there we go Let's hit play. Hmm, okay. Well, I can see one problem. We do not have, um, we do not have any take up, and also it took a while for the solenoid to engage. Yeah, we have no motor. Uh, so we have a bad, um, probably have a bad idler motor because it's not uh, moving the cassette. Okay, I can see it's definitely. Okay, so it's definitely not going in the right mode. We're going to unplug that because if something's happening, something's going on. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and before, because it sounded like it's stripping gears or something. So before we strip any gears, let's get this thing um, taken off here. I'm hoping that there's nothing wrong with the actual loading assembly, but... I mean, I think that the cassette basket may need some work. But I think that with that motor not working or the motor sticking, um, you know, it's going to make the VCR shut down. And it can make it so that the tape can be stuck in it. So well, we're going to go ahead and get to this is called the mystery tape. And we'll find out what's on it here in a little bit. But. I hope this is something I can fix, you know. I probably can, but you never know. Sometimes you'll run into something that, you know, you're just like, what in the heck is wrong with it, you know, so. But not very often, and most of the time I can fix them. 
So, okay, let's. There we go. Okay, she's coming out. Okay, I can see what's going on. Okay guys, this might even be a blank tape. This is a scotch, because uh, these are those really shitty uh, scotch cassettes. I'm not a fan of scotch. It looks like this might, oh this is a pre-recorded movie. The label is gone. But there's writing right there, which is done on factory, factory tape, like pre-recorded movies that you buy at a store. They'll put a number on the cassette and then they'll glue the label on it. Another indication uh, that this is a uh, pre-recorded movie. This is an L430. We can't, you can't buy L, L430s. Uh, only the people that were manufacturing pre-recorded movies could do that so it'll be interesting to see what's on it so it's a mystery tape there now let's plug I'm gonna plug this back in because it was stripping gears when Okay, well it is, the rail's moving now. Okay, so I'm gonna hit eject. And then I'm going to uh, unplug it because there's something wrong. Um, immediately, it wants to put the cassette in. That is telling me that there's a mechanical timing issue in the cassette housing. There's a, I think there's a mechanical problem with that. So let's. Hit eject. Okay, let's try to plug it back in. I'm just trying to determine what it is that's happening. Okay. So... Some kind of a mechanical timing issue here. Okay. So when you plug it in, it shouldn't be wanting to load.
Okay, now there are some there's some issues here, which is very strange. Um, very very strange. Why is it wanting to load automatically? Well, we could have. What could be happening is uh, there could be a switch. There's a switch for the insertion of the tape. When a tape gets inserted, that switch over here, it closes and tells the VCR to put the tape, to load the tape because the tape has been inserted. If that switch is for some reason stuck or malfunctioning, um, that will want it, because it wants to load the tape when the cassette basket has no tape in it. So, very, very interesting. So I'm going to, let's see, here's the switch. So the switch is right here. I'm going to disconnect the cassette housing because I want to find out why, why is that happening. So let's plug it back in because now with the switch unplugged, it's not going to want to start feeding the tape what was happening is that the reason why it was grinding is because the the mechanism isn't working right but the cassette basket is going going down and the machine wants to start threading the tape before the cassette is all the way in so we just have to figure what what is going on. This is going to be a challenging one, I think, because I'm going to have to really start thinking about what I can do. So, so now because that switch is unplugged, now it's behaving like it should when you power it on. Power it on, solenoid engages, you're fine. Now, here's what's happening. I believe that this could be an issue with the switch. And let me show you the switch, what I'm talking about. Okay, so I unplugged the switch, but these two wires plug together. Your switch is right down in here. So, the thing that I want to do, I'm going to unplug the machine. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take the front face plate off uh, take the cassette basket out and I want to investigate that switch because of that switch another thing that could be happening is that uh, okay yeah that switch is stuck is it possible to hook it up backwards because maybe somebody took it apart and hooked it up backwards by accident but I don't think you can, well, no, you could do that. Actually, that might be possible. It might have been. I don't know. Um, I just have to start looking and finding out. Uh, no, you cannot hook it up backwards. So, yeah, so you can't hook it up in reverse on accident. So, this has got to be a failure with the switch. So... I'm going to do a complete service on this machine um, because I think that there's parts they've been sitting for so long uh, that the switches, you know, they've got, you know, they, they're, the switches are dirty, the uh, oil has dried out the grease for the gears have dried out so you know there's a number of things that we need to do to get this thing back up and fully operational i don't think it's going to take much um so i'm going to pull that cassette basket out because i want to see why is that switch stuck why is that switch this cassette basket does it seems like it's got a problem, so I think that it does. I really believe that this um, cassette basket, cassette housing, 
the cassette housing is what it's properly named. I believe that the cassette housing has indeed have a problem. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, take the screws out. Uh, that way I can get a uh, face so, so I can take this face plate off. You know what I think I'll do is I might I'm gonna investigate the because the switch and then I'm gonna investigate the cassette housing because I want to know is the uh, is the cassette housing failed or the switch has failed or you know what's going on sometimes when I'm diagnosing these things I can diagnose it wrong until I actually get in there and then I realize okay that's not what it is it's actually this other issue because that does happen sometimes you'll misdiagnose something because you got ideas going through your head especially me because I have so much uh, knowledge on the beta machines and very familiar with a lot of the different uh, ones that there are um, I can tell you pretty much anything you want to know about the beta systems so I've been working on these betas now for about six years and I really come to get to know them and uh, be able to find out exactly what is going on so it should be some pull tabs on the side And this thing will lift up, back, out. I'm just going to pull this back out enough to where I can get the cassette housing out. Because I want to see what's going on with it. I just want to find out. I do have another cassette housing so that I can put in this thing. But these these old beta machines, I love them. I cherish them. I sell them. I fix them. I sell them. Give them to new homes and give them a new life. You know, give them a second chance in life. It's kind of like sometimes what God does for us. He gives us a second chance. You know, I was in a, a very bad car accident about six years ago, and I seen some things, and it's like, okay, yeah, uh, there is 100% there is a God, and I do believe that 100% that sometimes God gives you a second a second chance in life. Well, I'm giving the Betamax VCRs a second chance in life, so, uh, you know, but let's go ahead and pull this out. Um, oh yeah, I gotta take the belt off first. There we go. And you get the belt off there, so let's pull this out. Let's find out what's going on with it. Okay. So I'm just checking the switch, and uh, what I'm thinking... Okay, just as I suspected. This is exactly what I thought was happening. This switch is in the uh, closed position. The switch should not be in that closed position. That's why it's wanting to load the tape. Let me get a close up so you guys can see. But this is why the... This is what's happening. So you can see here... See how it's in the closed position? 
that's why that's why I wanted to load the tape automatically uh, when, when I powered it on it just sucked it down in there and because there was no these switches don't get pressed unless there's a cassette in there but when I pressed down these switches then it started to thread but, so I'm just gonna get the switch and replace it we'll just replace that switch or we'll pull it out and do some lubrication on it and see I think I'll just go ahead and pull it out we'll do some investigation on it so let's get that switch out so you can pull the tabs and the switch will come right out pull these two tabs okay so now the switch is not making contact so something the switch was just basically I think the switch was stuck is what was going on the switch is just stuck so I'm gonna unstick it uh, I'm gonna use contact cleaner here and I want to clean the switch with some contact cleaner as well because I've already got the switch out so if you already got the switch out it's a good idea to just go ahead and, and give it some some contact cleaner sometimes it's good to get a piece of sandpaper in there too to clean the clean the mechanical contacts so okay let's put that switch back in and see see because if we put it in and it's closing uh, so that is exactly what's happened with this one so the switch just goes down in there like this okay yeah so when I put that switch in there it's wanting to close so that should not be happening so what's happening we do have an issue with the cassette housing yeah the cassette housing is not there's a piece here that's yeah there's something that's causing that uh, switch to be open or closed yeah because that should not be that should not be in the closed position when you install it put in I think we'll just change out the cassette housing for now until I can figure out what the reasoning on why the uh, switches is, is in the closed position when it gets inserted yeah and I think the reason why it's it's uh, the switch is instantly turned on uh, when I put the switch in is because there's a gear in the cassette housing that is not lined up and it's basically pushing the cassette basket in just enough um, and actually I could see it's crooked so on one side it's pushed in far you know when the the tape goes in it this basket moves and then that's what triggers the switch so but we will get another basket we can repair I can repair this basket this cassette housing I'm pretty sure I can repair that but for right now I just want to get a working cassette basket in here 
so that uh, we can roll out that aspect of it and then we can start doing some maintenance uh, to this thing so and you know it's kind of funny because you know sometimes you you, you can just you can diagnose something and you can just be spot on and then other times you can diagnose something and you're like, well, nope, that's not what's wrong. So, there's a lot of dust in this thing. A lot of dust. A lot of dirt. And I'm really starting to think that this has probably been sitting for a number of years. And it's been sitting for at least a couple of years. Because the pin... Because you can tell because of all the dust, like there's so much dust on this thing. And there's so much dirt, so. Set baskets in, so let's just plug this in and, and uh, we'll see what happens there. So let's get this plugged in. Alright. Okay. Well, that's a good sign. It's no longer trying to pull the tape in. Well, we changed out the cassette basket and uh, so now it should fire up. Let's use this as our test tape because this is what came in the machine. <laughs> I'll use some alcohol to clean the tape, you know, and the glue kind of smeared but we'll see what's on it. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, so we just took out some issues. Yeah, we have some issues. We've got some solenoids not engaging. Yeah, we got some, uh, we got solenoids that are stuck. Um, yeah, so we've got solenoids that are sticking and the motor's not working very good. No, don't go out. See, it's trying to reject the tape when it's not even unthreaded it. Nope, don't do that. Okay, so let's just manually unthread it. So basically, you just need to go in clean i need to clean the switches clean the solenoids um you know this solenoid on the top here this one's fine there's nothing wrong with it it's trying to reject the tape without unthreading it so it's literally trying to eject before the tape even unthreads so we definitely have some major, major solenoid stiction problems on the bottom. So, and that motor works when there's no tape in it. But the minute that there's a tape in, you're putting a load on the machine. So the machine has a load on it, and it's literally not moving. So we have a, a situation where we have the Hall Effect 
device has failed, uh, which is basically the motor for the idler. Um, that solenoid is not engaging like it should because when this, the solenoids are definitely just giving some, just these solenoids are definitely having some issues. So basically, what I'm going to do is unthread this and get it out, and then uh, we'll. We'll go from there, so let's put that down there for right now, so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here, or you can at least get an idea of what I'm doing. So I'm just going to unthread this, because it, it should not be having issues like this, so... It's definitely solenoids or stock. They need to be, you know, fixed. Okay, so now we're gonna take the tape out by lifting up the cassette basket by hand. I don't want to choose this tape up too bad because I'm kind of curious to see what's on it. Luckily, it's at the beginning, so if I had to, I could splice it together. So I could splice the bad section, and, you know, because I do want to see what's on the tape, because I am very curious as to what is exactly on the tape. And I'll probably use my good old reliable Sanyo to uh, see what's on these mystery tapes. Because some of these tapes are so old that, and especially with them being Scotch, Scotch, Scotch tapes were double coated. Um, and also they shed oxide. So the oxide is the chemical that comes with the it's the material that comes off of the tape and it and it uh, comes off onto the video heads and clogs the heads and dirties the video heads. So when I'm running old scotch tapes, sometimes I just run them through a good old reliable Sanyo and uh, see what's on them. Because I've got a, a 4027 that I want to then I'm going to hook up here and uh, play some of those mystery tapes. So, I, I think to keep the video from being so long, I'm just going to maybe come back to this project, you know. But we got the cassette basket issue taken care of. You know, we have some solenoids that are sticking so what I'm gonna do is spray a little contact cleaner down into the into the solenoid switch here because I want to get some cleaner down in there. Just give it a good. Just give it a good uh, squirt. Okay. Now let's go. Let's see if that solenoid. Oh yeah, much better. Yep, that switch is much much better. 
So just by putting some contact cleaner in this top switch. So the next thing that we can do here is I'll put the top on, turn it upside down. We'll take the motor mechanism apart. We'll take the real table apart, assembly, and we'll see. Well, let's see what's going on. Because I don't know. Do, do I want to take a... I don't know. Do I want to take a break from it? Or, you know, keep the... You know, because sometimes you get burned out working on one specific project. Yeah, that really does sound a lot better. So, okay, I've unplugged it. What I'm gonna do is we'll just let's we'll just get this top off by the bottom. Let's pull this bottom off because I want to take apart the motor. I want to see if. It's a possibility that it might be a good idea for me to just go ahead and... Well, I'm going to clean the uh, solenoids. Yeah, I'll clean both of the solenoid switches and then we'll see. And we'll, we'll go from there and, and uh, see how, how uh, we've come along. See how good we've, we've come. And one thing about working on these is... You don't want to put the screws back in until you know the machine works. And then put the screws in. Because I've learned that. I mean, I've done that. I've, you know, took the screws off and then put them back on, put them off, put them back on. And that basically can give you a chance of, of uh, stripping the strips. So. As tight as these screws are, I don't think anybody's opened the bottom of it. For sure somebody's opened the top, but these bottom ones are, are very, very tight. And they still f have resistance. So, I don't think anybody's taken the screws off the bottom panel. Okay, so we get this bottom panel off. Then we gotta get that circuit board off. And then we can look at the motor assembly here the motor mechanism I'll probably just go ahead and replace the motor because I have a motor so we will just because I don't cleaning the switches will help it from sticking but you're still gonna have an issue of the um, motor because the motor is not working when it's on a load if it's loaded down it won't work so I'm pretty sure that yes this motor is bad and will definitely need to be replaced so because I've already got this thing taken apart I am going to clean the solenoids we are going to replace the motor and we are going to get this thing up in operational. So, oh, you know what? I take it back. I think somebody has opened it. There's a screw missing on the circuit board. Unless that was me that I took it out and don't remember. So, Let's go ahead and lift it up. I'm going to get me something here to hold it open. And let's get the... I'm going to take this stupid cover off. I don't like these covers because they're, they're a pain in the butt.
those, those pink wires get wrapped around too. have the wires wrapped around this plastic shit thing. You've seen me work on the on, on these four hundreds before. Happen. I never put those back on. I hate those damn things. So, I know somebody on YouTube is going to make some stupid comment. Oh, that plastic piece is there for a reason. Yeah, well, it's not. It's just there to uh, protect the components. But I'm not sure why they put it there. But you know what? I don't care. I don't like those covers. I'm not putting them on. You can hate me all you want. That's the way it is. Okay. Now, take these screws out. Okay. Alright. Take these out. Now, there's a lot of wiring here, so I've got to move the wiring before I can even attempt to get this darn thing out, so. There's a screw there that's, that I can get to. So we just pull the motor. I'm going to pull. Gotta get these wires up and out of the way so I can see where the hell the screws are. Cannot see the screws when they got wires covering every darn thing. So that little uh, that line holds that. So I just want to take the wires and pull them away. I'm just gonna try to get some of these. I gotta get the wires out of here, so.
always put the wires back in when you you get done but for now I always pull the wires out because it's a pain in the butt and you want to lift that motor out and you can't be able to lift it right out as soon as we get these wires up and out of the way I always try to pull some of these wires out because they they will cause headaches I'm trying to take the mechanism out itself yeah I know I'm being a little rough with it but I need to get it out Just like that. Okay. Alright, let's get them out. What's that? Okay guys, we got the motor mechanism out. So now we can just take the reels off. So always remember the white goes on the uh, on the left, uh, the left side there. I need two hands to do this, so I'm gonna have to put the camera down. I just need two hands to do this. Um, fortunately, because I can't do anything unless. Because, and because we have the motor out, now we can do the servicing. Pull the reel table off here. Let's pull the reel table assembly and let's get that out. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to pull the, oops. Okay. It's going to set these parts over here out of the way and we'll take the screws Let's get screws out of here because I have another motor that I can put in here it's my it's the very last motor I have for the 900, so after this, I don't have any more motors for the 900. I might have one more in my other machine, because NEC, I have an NEC that has this motor in it, and the NECs use this particular Sony motor. I don't understand why the hell that screw is in there so tight. Okay. 
Looks like we just got that screws just stripped down on me, so it might be a little bit before I can get that off here. Shoot, I don't understand why that motor why that screw stripped out like that. That shouldn't have happened, but it does tend to happen, so um Sometimes you get a, you can get a, a straight screwdriver in there, and you can can get it, get it out. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I don't understand why that screw is not coming out. That is a pain in the butt. Okay, so we got the we got the old motor out. This is the old motor, and I actually ended up um, having to break it in order to get it out because that one screw was completely stripped. And so what I had to do was once I got this removed, I had to take a pair of diagonal cutters they're meant for cutting wire but I got it underneath the head and grabbed a hold of it and was able to unscrew it and get it to come out so because this one right here was stripped so this is the old broken one which is now useless but I think what I'll do is like do some tests. I'm just curious to see if maybe it was one of these capacitors that had failed. Let's see what what voltage are these caps? Look like they're 40. Oh, they're 16 volt, 47 microfarad. So we'll test those caps because I am curious to see. If those caps went bad because I bet you one of them went bad if the caps go bad then that means that the motor is not gonna work so I'm just gonna test those but we'll do that later so here's my new motor that we're gonna set into place so we're gonna get that set into place and that should fix it Okay, so I'm gonna go underneath the. I gotta go underneath. So this goes underneath like that, and that'll sit down in there like that. So, put the screws in and get that up and going. So, we'll get. I'll put my screws in, and then so this is the motor here so usually what happens these caps they go bad and which when they go bad then the motor no longer works but I'm just gonna get some cleaner in these little solenoid switches so I'm gonna do that and then I'll put the screws back on there so when you clean them make sure Sometimes you can get a blast of cleaner in there. Well, I would say that's one of the reasons why uh, this thing wasn't working. This solenoid switch is stuck. The switch is completely froze. So this solenoid is completely froze. That's that's most likely what was causing the issue because that's why because we weren't hearing we heard the solenoid on top engage, but we did not hear the solenoid engage on the bottom. So this is the one that's completely froze. So it's supposed to move freely like this one. 
See how that one just moves nice and free? But this one is not. Oh yeah, there it is. There it goes. No, it's not. It's not going... Yeah, because it's not supposed to... There we go. So... There it goes. There it goes. Okay, we got it freed. But I'm gonna shoot a whole bunch in there, so. We'll set the camera down. Well, we seem to get it freed. It was frozen, and now it's starting to work. Let's do the same to this one. Now, I'll put my washer on here. I gotta get another screw for that back side. We'll just clean the, clean the coils there. So, that might have been our problem all along with that stuck solenoid, because this is supposed to move, you know. Still having a problem. Okay. Alright, let's get my I'll get the screws back in. And then the motor now, so Okay, so we got it all reinstalled and serviced it. So let's go ahead now and see what happens. Okay, it's, it's going to work because you can hear the clicking. So the solenoids are now engaging like they should. Now when we hit play, it should start playing. And it does. No. What the hell? Okay, what's going on here? Motor's not working. Okay. 
So we still have an issue. You know, that motor that I put in, I think I might have put in the wrong, I might have accidentally put the broken one in. Because, uh, let me double check. I'm going to take the thing back apart. If this is, I don't know if I have another one or not. If I don't, then the best solution is to just repair the one that I have. So let's get this thing taken apart again. And I'm going to go ahead and check the capacitors on the on the motor and see if we have any caps that might have failed because I bet you this is the only motor I had left and I thought it was a good one but apparently it wasn't so anyway sometimes this is how it goes you know sometimes you, you, you're getting there I mean we're in the right direction because now when you put the tape in all the solenoids are now starting to engage so the top solenoids engaging the bottom ones are engaging uh, the motor is not working the motor is dead so I'm gonna check for caps on that motor and then we're going to put new caps in put the motor all back in and then we'll see what happens but uh, I will film myself checking the caps. So we removed the motor. Um, so now basically I'm just going to be um, checking these capacitors. Um, so let's see if there are any that have failed. I, I suspect that there is some. That has failed. So let's get my meter on here. Because I suspect there is going to be some failure in the caps here. So, okay, let's get, let's test this one. Let's see where the negative and the positive is. Okay, negatives on that side. Okay. this one that one is tested good So I'm not talking because I want to see, because I want to read the caps on this. And I'm just trying to get a Just try, try to get an accurate description of what's going on. Okay. Let's just go with this one. Okay, there that one's dead. That one's dead. What's going on? Yeah, I do have a suspicion that this cap over here is probably 
fail here. Yeah, that one's that one. Okay. I'm gonna change the battery in my multimeter because it's giving me false readings because one second it'll read and then the next Saturday a second it won't so yeah if you got a dead battery in your multimeter it'll cause you uh, not to be able to you know it won't tell you the right information if your reading is jumping all over the place that's usually uh, we replace the battery in the multimeter, so which this one the battery came out, but okay, I'm gonna throw this one away and put a new one in it. I got a set of batteries. Uh this I'll just take the battery out of this. These are good batteries. I just gotta go to the, um, I think basically Because if you get a false reading, you could be replacing something that you may not need to even replace. So. That one is okay. is bad. Okay, let's check the next one here. That one is also bad. So I suspect all these are bad, so except for that one. C3, which is just gonna be right over here. It's gonna be C3 right there. That one's okay. Okay, so basically these two or I suspect that these two I have failed so I'm gonna get my siren iron hot and we'll get them done because I got I have the caps because these are what 16 volt or 10 volt uh, so one's a 16 volt 16 yeah these are 16 volt at uh, 
47 microfarads so we'll replace those and then we'll put the motor back in the machine so basically just replacing these caps and I'm pulling them out and they smell like fish there are 16 out of 47 so basically what I'm gonna do is put new caps in 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 uh, all of them. One more, one more electrolytic to come out. There we go, guys. Okay, we're getting them out. All of them have now been removed, so. Now it's time to put in some new ones. So I'm going to put the new ones in and we'll solder them in and then uh, we'll get the motor back into the machine. Luckily I have a nice assortment of caps. So the caps that we are after, we need a 16 volt at uh, 47 microfarads. So that's going to be it right there. So I'm going to get those out. We'll put them in. Um, as you can see, there are four electrolytic capacitors that we're going to replace. So let's get them in. And let me get the... Uh, get the... Uh, there we go. So... I'm going to need four of the electrolytic 16 at 47 microfarads. Microfarad. These are big caps. Wow. These are big caps. Compared to the size that was in there. Holy cow. Well, it's a good thing it's got long leads on it because... Uh, I think I'll need that long lead because, uh, holy smokes. Oh no, that's 470. We don't want that. That's why they were so doggone big. Boy, I wonder if I even have them. Maybe I don't have them. Might have to order them. Hold on, just 50, 60, 60, 16 at 22. That's not gonna work. Uh, let's see. 16 at 33. I don't think I have any. I can go up on the... I think you can go up a little bit on the microferret. Microferret. You know, it's... Uh, let's see. 16 at 47. So 16 at 33. 16 at... Closest I'm gonna come is 16 volt at uh, 50. Yeah, 
Yeah, so these are 16 at 50 micro per. No, no, that's not 50. Hold on, I'm sorry guys, that's the wrong one. Um, 16 at 100 microfarad. Well, that's a little high, but I'm going to try them. I know that that's going to be a little high. Yeah, it's going to be a little high, but that's all right. We're going to try it. Get some of my caps out of here. So, one, two, three, and the four. Okay, so I'm gonna install the 16 volt at 100 microfarad because I don't have uh, any of the 47 microfarad. So, yes, I've going a little bit high and uh, it may not work but we're gonna we're gonna try here so and these caps are a little bit bigger than the than the uh, other ones but not by much so they're not that much bigger guys so okay all right let's let's slide them in shall we Let's do this one first here. So you're gonna try to find the freaking holes. There we go, guys. So I'll just mount them here. Sixteen volt. Okay, guys, so let's get this one soldered in. Let's get that soldered. Put them in like that. Yeah, might as well just start putting all of them in, but I think I'll just do one at a time. Or two at a time, because... Yeah, I'll just do... Well, you know what? Yeah, I'll put them... I'll just put them all in. I'll put everyone in, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll solder them in. Um, okay. Let's get that one in. Okay. I just want to make sure that I'm getting them in there good. I bend the bend the prongs over a little bit so the that way they'll they'll stay in place here okay I got it plugged in we got it all put back together let's just I'm gonna use my dummy tape just in case it eats tapes I would say I fixed it. Yep. So basically replacing, uh, there was four capacitors that were bad in the uh, idler motor. So next thing to do is just uh, clean the heads and and uh, should be good to go. Let's try a tape. Let's just put it under a load and we'll see what happens here. So let's just get a um, pre-recorded Star Trek movie here. I don't want to put any any of the mystery tapes in because we still don't know. We don't know what's on those tapes. And we don't know if there's sticky stuff on the tape. So I want to use a known good tape.
Okay, so it's working guys. So the next thing to do is, uh, you know, get a, uh, a picture and uh, we'll get the, we'll connect it and see if there's a picture. Um, I'm going to do that in another video because I've spent quite a bit of time on this, but ah, what the heck, let's, let's see if we got a picture. Okay, we have a picture. We need to track the picture. I can't show more than just a couple inches because YouTube will get, um, will basically block me with copyright strike. And I'm, there we go. Now our line has went away. Now we're in tracking. And this is a very, very old tape too, so. I can't show more than that, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, they, YouTube has been hitting me with copyright. I have been working on this machine all day. But uh, we finally got it going again. And it feels good when you're able to fix something. Especially something with uh, electrical uh, issues. Uh, and yes, I know that this video is a little long. And I do... Uh, apologize for that so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the heads and I'm gonna go watch a movie so see you guys in the next one bye bye